Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, it's been a few months since my last video, and I've moved and put my stuff in storage, including, like, uh, I don't know, I give a number, 90 plus, 95 percent plus of my vinyl and uh, of most of my music, unfortunately. But what can you do? I can go to the storage spaces and access it. Um, one more, th uh, some more than others. <laughs> of course, when you have a lot of stuff in a storage space, uh, a lot of it is behind other things or under other things and boxes and they're labeled. But um, although I got bins for most of my vinyl, I never understood until doing this move why they don't recommend when people that collect vinyl don't recommend plastic bins. You can get them at Target or probably some other places like probably your Walmarts, your stores like that. Anyway, they're preferred from a both a, a efficiency and a, uh, even a, well, I don't know, a cost standpoint, but at least an efficiency and uh, to protect your records um, over like wooden crates that are loose. <laughs> anyway, long explanation, longer. <laughs> I'm going to show some records and some music, some CDs that I bought recently, and even one DVD maybe, um, a couple other things. I don't know if I can do any other commentary on this video, but maybe I'll make another video if I have time today. I'm not sure. So, so I'm just going to get into it and some of the news that's come up too. But um, So first thing I'm going to show is just the two 7 inches I have picked up. Well, one was a, a 7 inch I bought intended to buy and I hope this is coming out okay I'm trying to avoid some things in the background where I'm filming is not at my own where I'm living unfortunately it's we're in transition but so I'm just this is obviously learning what makes sense where to film how I can film that kind of stuff there's other places I've thought about filming even in the car again that may be where I'm gonna do some of it so but anyway so among the seven inches these two seven inches. What one? Small leak sink ships antipode. Their new um, single seven inch, uh, which has Dancing Devil as the A side and Cross Chatters the B side. I don't know why it's called antipode. Maybe technically it would be considered an EP because it's not a song antipode, obviously. But uh, and they just put out and I put posted on the blog yesterday uh, the the video for Dancing Devil, which has this girl walking in this like. She's not in the forest. Well, I guess you could say at the forest or the woods in nature, blindfolded with this sort of, I don't know, it's not a dementia from Harry Potter, but it's like something, a black thing with these pointy arms and hands and that kind of thing, kind of guiding her along, plus sort of distracting her, trying to sway her mindset, but she's blindfolded the whole time. Anyway, it's a, an odd video, but a an interesting video, almost very conceptual. I'd, I'd be curious to read more about what the director was thinking. But yeah, I like Dancing Devil a lot. I think it would fit well on their the last record that I love so much, Dan, uh, Small League Sink Ships, uh, Space Yourself and Remove Your Sandals. But And the B-side, I've listened to Cross Chatter once or twice. That was a couple months ago when they shared it before, obviously, this came out. Here's the, uh, the actual 7-inch vinyl. This is their first... Uh, vinyl release of any kind, uh, Small League Sink Ships, Portland band, originally from Arizona. But um, then they also announced a couple months ago, and then they've given, given the details just yesterday, finally, October 12th, the, the, the next full length called Golden Calf comes out. So, And they included this 7-inch from the, the label. I don't know if this is the same label, or this is from Lefty Records, this, the Small League Sink Ships, but uh, Choi Lin and... Choi Lin and White Sheet Beach. I'm not sure if it's called Fishing. If these are two separate bands or one band, I'm guessing it was uh, the label inherited this because it said 2012 on the, the back here on this case, but no idea what kind of uh, Laga Records. No idea what kind of uh, music this is. Uh, maybe it's similar. It's like the post rock, math rock, that Small Leaks Sink Ships or something else, maybe punk. Anyway, uh, they, they just threw it in, so, you know, I'm happy to take it at this point, even though I'm, I've come to conclude buying vinyl, especially in anything, is just physical items. It's got its limitations because of space, <laughs> after having to put my stuff into storage, so. 
All right, I'm going to try to go through these as quickly as possible. So, Ramona Falls, since I've made my last video, I think, announced their first album, their next album, since 2012, first album, uh, Coils, and there was a pre-order and everything, and then Brent Knopf was sharing songs with many people that uh, were on the mailing list. And so I got the record, I've heard a number of songs, I haven't heard the whole thing, honestly, because I obviously haven't listened to this vinyl. Unfortunately, my copy of this red vinyl of Coils... I don't know if you can see it. it. has some little marks on it, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm um, I'm tempted to let him know, um, but I don't know. I don't know if Ramona Falls is going to come and tour, come to tour here. But um, I love their first two records, Ramona Falls, the uh, the last one, Profit, and then uh, Into It, and it's very sort of. Cerebral, artistic, animated, and like a bunch of the songs that were sent to the people on the email list uh, came with like animated gifts and stuff like that. Um, just, to, I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't listened to all of it. I only listened to like half of it because the songs he shared, they wasn't online. And then it, eventually it became available to buy digitally, but again, I already purchased it obviously here. So I didn't. Um, I didn't go ahead and buy it digitally, but uh, it, I finally was able to find it online. But um, yeah, the of course the way he prayers is the first song. That song's maybe most memorable. It's kind of a multi-part, very orchestral. But um, I'll try to do another video. <laughs> written up if I can make more videos, hopefully like this, talking maybe more about it. At a minimum, I would say where this ends up at the end of the year, it will be shown again in the video at the end of the year and hopefully elaborated on. But um. I'm on. I'm sort of lukewarm about it. Uh, those two reference two records are great from Ramona Falls. Obviously, Brentnoff from Anomena previously loved most of the work he did there. Almost all of it, pretty much his songs, especially. But I love Menomina and also. So, anyway, more more the the jury's slightly still out on Coils, but I, I don't think it's a bad record for sure. Just because I know he put a lot into this and he he worked and was very meticulous. It took five years to make. In effect, he was doing that I LV thing with the guy from the National between the last records. So, so uh, one of the bands that I've um, like I saw Cloud Cult back in June. They did the complete Seeker album with the film synchronized. So I'm wearing the new shirt also. <laughs> but and ironically, the connection to Cloud Cult just uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, oh, this just right. This wasn't open. I uh, I've mentioned Bentney, the last Bentney album, which I'm gonna show. In a, in a little bit here, hopefully. Um, but they finally came and played here. They played here in 2014 in Minnesota, but they tour here and there. Bentney, this band from Boston, Avant Prague, very circusy. Um, but this is their new album, Land Animal, and um, I'm starting to become a bigger Bentney fan, uh, having seen them now live a couple weeks ago, and I think they're better live than even the studio records. But here's the new album, Land Animal, which Maybe he's getting the most attention of any of their albums, and it's it's. I think it's released on Inside Out Records. This is heavy weight. This is like this has got to be 180 gram, if not higher. Um, the title track to this record is terrific. I just I think the that melody. I meant I, I mentioned in the review of the concert a couple weeks ago, in the blog, from the title track is just where the Courtney Swain sings it, and then it's echoed by the the violin and the strings and that kind of thing. Kind of stuff, but um, ah, this is this is an excellent album. I don't know if it's album of the year, but I think just like the last album, Say So, uh, from 2016, there's it would be strange if this didn't end up in the top ten for sure. And uh, they're they're nice people. Oh, it even came with the CD. I didn't even realize that. Oh no, it, yes, it did. Cool. I was thinking about buying the CD as well, which I'm I don't know, at some point maybe I'll pick up if they come back here. Just to have a more convenient copy, but again, like Menomina, like like Ramona Falls Coils album, I'll probably elaborate more on it. But I've listened to this a lot, and they have these parts in their songs that I really look forward to. It's very schizophrenic music, like I said, it's like circus rock. Female vocals, they have some gang vocals, strings, odd times, very goofy at times, very just heavy at times. But they're they're an interesting and unique band. I mean, I I I compare Bentney. After listening to more of their stuff recently, and even going back to last year, sort of reminded me of two bands, Kiss Kiss a little bit, 
and uh, Unexpect. Especially the Unexpect thing makes some sense, although they're not as heavy. I guess they're in a, exactly a metal band the way Unexpect is, although they opened for the Dillinger Escape Plan at one point. They also opened for Thank You Scientists. So, anyway, that's Bent Knee's uh, Land Animal record. And like I said, I'll probably try to talk about it more in a few months when I do the end of the year. Um, so that's as far as new releases go on vinyl. So I picked up Cafe Jock, uh, the second album international at Barely Brothers in St. Paul uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is a standard version. Just to talk about them just a, in a minute here, or even less, Cafe Jock was a band that I f first saw the name when, when I was talking about Apes and Androids back in 2008, 2009, kind of in the glam rock psychedelic mode and um, but I, I've only listened to a few songs here and there but this was only three bucks and I've, I've been wanting to like listen to their more of the music although this is their second record their first record which I'm, I can't remember if it's a self-titled or what the name of it is um, is higher rated and might actually ultimately be a, an album that I prefer but let me just skip that for now but yeah, they're, they're from the 70s. I don't know if they're still around, or what the members have done, or if they did more, but they had two or three records in the mid to late 70s. So, so all right. And then this I found for... This was actually new. I didn't even realize that. But it was actually removed, like a lot of European... <sighs> this is what happens when you don't have time. I feel like I should tear the sleeve, actually. Maybe I, I can just do the... No. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be able to show the actual physical piece unless I can quickly... There we go. I think it's coming. This is the joys of, of doing videos that aren't edited. I picked up, um, after working a lot of overtime, which I've been doing at work, we've had these incentives and stuff like that, uh, Necrophagist's last record. I believe this is their last record. Um... Jeez, this is not meant to be... There we go. They, they really like to tape this stuff and they make it difficult for someone removing... This is called... Uh, I believe this is... Um, epit not epitaph. Is it Epitaph? It's not, it's not called Epitaph. It's... Uh, yeah, it is Epitaph. I was thinking it was called something similar, but not that exact. Their last record. It's This is Technical Death Metal. Oh, it even comes with a download, which off Relapse record, Records. Um... I don't know when the vinyl itself came out. If it was right around the time, probably not. It probably was more recently that Relapse Records issued this with the resurgence of vinyl. I think Burst is on Relapse Record, which if they ever... And I think they, they did issue that my favorite Burst record, uh, uh, Lazarus Burn on that, but... Anyway, um, this is slightly relevant in, in, in my mind recently with Hans Grossman, that's right, and he's done solo work. Marco Miniman, of course, of Stephen Wilson fame uh, up until the new record, and, and a lot of other, you know, the aristocrats also played on at least one, or at least toured with them, or maybe played on maybe one or more of the, the other records from uh, Necrophagus. But um, I think they're German, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, technical death metal. This is some of the most technical music you can find in the last 15 years. And uh, this record, I'm not even sure it's considered their best, but... With the breakup I was trying to get at of Spawn of Possession was announced uh, a couple days ago on Sunday, I think, or Saturday, whenever it was. Uh, it made me think of these guys because, like, these Spawn of Possession kind of took the mantle slightly from. I mean, they they're around, they crossed over, but when when Necrophages kind of has been only a touring band here and there the last decade and didn't were doing a recording, Spawn of Possession I kind of saw as sort of taking over. Although Spawn of Possession only put out three albums, and I should do a separate video on them. Their last record being from 2012 um, in Curso. So, yeah, um, even those vinyls, weird to listen to a lot of ex technical and extreme metal. This is, I, I couldn't, I wanted to pick up something else the day that I bought this, and I saw this, and I don't think this is very easy to find. So, then the last Necrophages at record for now, Epitaph. Um, anyway, so, all right, so then I finally found it was. It wasn't impossible. It was on Amazon some other places after missing out on Record Store Day and not pre-ordering and then missing out at the concert with the Deer Hunter. Coed and Cambria's Good Apollo uh, uh, 1, uh, Fear for the, Through the Eyes of Madness, um, I'm Burning Star 4, or I'm Burning Star 4, Fear Through, Through the Eyes of Madness. One of my top 50 to 60 records of all time. Um, I'm not going to be able to 
elaborate in detail about it, but um, it's their progius, it's their quote unquote most epic, and uh, it's their uh, it's their most catchy record, I would argue, the most melodic, um, and it's their even I you might even say their best produced because they've had records that fall that that I don't like the production, I don't like the mixing of the cymbals especially. And this is heavyweight vinyl, go figure. So, yeah, it's it was kind of a... The fact that I, I want it on vinyl, and I have uh, the previous record, um, In Keeping Secrets um, 3, and that record I view as their second best. So I'm glad I kind of have the two, to me, essential Coheed and Cambria records on vinyl now. So, cool gatefold. I have the, the graphic novel, which I think I did show in a video previously when I got at the show. I can't remember. I, I, I got to re rewatch or <laughs> review those videos from a few months ago when I was doing them. So I think the wife noticed this for me when I was at Barely Brothers a few uh, weeks ago. The Dukes of Stratosphere, the side project, psychedelic uh, pop, like very influenced by the, like uh, Pink, early Pink Floyd especially and some of the Beatles, from Andy Partridge of, of XTC. This is a... A seven or a twelve-inch single, I guess. Vanishing Girl, yes. And you know, it's Geffen Records, but it's not. There's nothing particularly amazing about uh, anything with the artwork or even the pressing. Reasonable shape, though. But yeah, and I've wanted to get the Dukes of Treasure Records, the the EP they put out in the full length. Um, I saw them many years ago, a few years back, at a store. In our hometown, uh, but the price was uh, <laughs> way more than I'd want to spend. Unfortunately, I don't know if it was rarity. This was before a lot of vinyl was becoming popular. It was maybe it was like 2011. I think it was probably so. At that point, vinyl, while it was starting to catch on a little bit more, it's not what it is in the last few years, especially. And I can't. I'll have to do that later again. All right, to continue this epic video, the return video for me from Kyle from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Porcupine Tree, uh, the 90s record, The Sky Moves Sideway, was issued on vinyl. I don't believe I have this. I have Up to Down Stair, I believe, but um, and I might have Voyage 34. I've, I've shown most, if not all, my Porcupine Tree vinyl. I'm pretty sure I've shown all of it, but look at Stephen Wilson there with the long hair. Anyway... But this, uh, this is, uh, I call it my favorite of the psychedelic period, maybe. I, I, a lot of it kind of blurs. Yeah, this is heavy weight. This is definitely like 180 or 200. But, um, yeah, Stars Dies on this. It's got the Sky Move Sideway Phase 1 and 2, of course, and Moon Loop, which is a 22-minute piece. It's very trippy, very um, music that segues. A lot, a lot like some of the Hawkwind stuff from the 70s that I've, Spent only sparing, sparingly time. I like you know uh, levitation the most, but yeah, I mean I put this as on par with anything that Stephen Wilson or that Porcupine Tree did in the '90s, especially maybe a, maybe their best work actually from the '90s. So I was finally, they, I guess this was a reissue. They, I finally was able to pick it up for a reasonable price. So all right, the, let's move on. Let me just stop here, and I'll just make a part two, but um, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. Thank you for anyone who's found this channel recently. I like a lot of the, the other people that are making videos. I'm gonna, I'd like to call it, like make shout-outs and stuff, but I can't off the top of my head. I know other people are going through the same thing where they go a long time without making a video, and then they make a video. I, I totally understand what you're going through. <laughs> YouTube would be nice if we had more access, more time, and more ability to edit at an easily, uh, amount, in an easy amount of time, but... Um, I'm going to make another video quickly, but uh, I'll see you next time.